What's up and welcome back to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. So we're gonna do this all in one take. We're gonna go over my top eight gaming laptops with RTX 4090s. Then we're gonna go over my favorite RTX 4090 laptops regardless of price. And we're, we're primarily just focusing on the most powerful version. So all of these laptops are full 175 watt RTX 4090 laptops. Now, if you're looking for something that's portable and packs a punch with an RTX 4090 in it, the Zephyrus G14 4090 version is probably my favorite go-to at this point, but we'll have to see what the competition fully comes out with as time goes on. Now, of course, um, this is not the best value overall, this is, there's definitely gonna be some better value probably in RTX 4080 gaming laptops if you're just after pure performance per dollar. Um, but if you're after the most premium, highest possible performance, these 4090 laptops are phenomenal and some of them actually do present some excellent value, uh, especially when compared to some of the 4080 laptops that are kind of only a few hundred dollars less. So we're gonna go over the top value RTX 4090 laptops in this video. Then we're also gonna do my favorite RTX 4090 laptops regardless of price. And then we're gonna look at a six way comparison with some of the top RTX 4090 laptops. Now this is not gonna include all of them. We're gonna do more benchmark comparisons in the future. And of course, lots more live streams, lots more reviews in the future as well. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you don't wanna miss out. Anyway, hit that notification bell, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for everyone's support of my channel. It's been just phenomenal in 2023. So much growth and it's blown me away. Thank you so much. Um, me and my team need your support and we really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Okay, so moving in to uh, the PowerPoint. I've created a PowerPoint for us to go over these. Um, so first of all, we're going to talk about the MSI GT 7713V. This is MSI's most powerful and most expensive gaming laptop for 2023. And I mean, it is a monster laptop. We got a 32 thread, 24 core i9 13980HX. Uh, we have undervolting support in this and I mean, it's got a ton of overclock as well on the RTX 4090. Um, and I wanna point out that the benchmarks that you're gonna see later uh, in this video on the GT77, those were the very first benchmarks I tested on an RTX 4090 laptop. And uh, that was the most raw drivers that you could get. Uh, and I'm confident that the GT77 would be performing uh, at a higher level in a lot of these games if we were to retest them. Now, I was about to retest it and I had a BIOS failure uh, when I went to update the BIOS. And that was because undervolting was still enabled on the GT77, even though I had zeroed out the values. That was not enough. You actually have to do a full BIOS reset uh, before you uh, update your BIOS. So you wanna go back to completely default settings when you update your BIOS on the MSI GT77 or any of the MSI laptops if you're doing your manual undervolting in that BIOS. So um, anyway, so the, four, the, the, the the MSI GT77 is one of the biggest laptops. Uh, it's got a four fan design, right? So uh, we got an incredible four fan design, keeps the GPU and CPU very cool. Like in a lot of the games that we were testing, we were seeing like 65 degrees on the CPU and GPU. It was absolutely insane. It was like desktop level temperatures in a lot of the games. Some of the games did get a little bit warmer into like the 70s or maybe low 80s at the highest, but I don't think we ever saw any thermal throttling no matter what we did with the GT77. It's an incredible uh, thermal design, but it's also a very loud fan system, um, but you can also run it on medium fans and get excellent all around um, thermal audio noise um, ambience, basically. And it's got a pretty good uh, mechanical keyboard. I really liked it actually. And a good touchpad, a good set of speakers with some bass and some nice volume. You get Windows Hello, only a 720p webcam with that Windows Hello. Uh, nice RGB lighting on the keyboard. And then of course in the rear lights. Um, going back up to the top here, we get 64 gigs of DDR5. What makes this laptop special? There's kind of three things that really set this laptop apart. You've got four sodium slots, so that means you can go up to 128 gigs of, of uh, DDR5 for 3,600 or 4,000 memory. Now, you don't get as fast of memory. That's one of the downsides with the GT77. And in some of the games that are more memory sensitive, that's also going to reduce your performance by at least a little bit. Now, um, 
it's the highest capacity. So if you if you need um, a lot of RAM in whatever applications you use, then this is probably this is the only one that goes above 64 gigs, to the best of my knowledge, uh, in 2023. So if you need desktop level 128 gigs RAM in whatever applications, this is the only option for you. Now the most people don't need that much. I think in terms of gaming, I think 32 gigs is plenty. 16 gigs is enough for the vast majority of games, but certain games are pushing into the 25, 26 uh, gig usage range. I have not seen any games needing more than 32 gigs yet, but it's possible in the future. Obviously, we'll see that. Now, you get a 4K 144 hertz, just fantastic mini LED display. We did over 900 nits in the display test, uh, but it is a bit of a slower response rate, and this did help my, uh, did hurt it did hurt my ability to aim in Apex Legends, which is ultimately why I returned the GT77 that I actually bought with my money. I got to try out MSI's review unit, and then I went out and bought one, and then I was like, oh, the, the, too much ghosting on this thing. Otherwise, it's almost perfect for almost every possible application, just the slower response rate. is probably the biggest drawback for any esports gamers. It's probably not the way to go. Um, plus, it's only 144 hertz, which is obviously not great for esports display. You want 240 hertz or maybe... Uh, even faster if you're an esports fanatic. Now, another thing, so the 4K, the fact that it's a 4K 144 hertz mini LED means it's brighter, more vibrant, but it does have bloom on it. The 3X M.2 slots with Gen 5 support um, are fantastic. It's some, it's better than the vast majority of laptops, arguably the best uh, M.2 support for um, any gaming laptop in 2023. There's also a, a tremendous port selection on the GT77. Um, let's talk about downsides. It's a larger laptop, of course, and there's no G-Sync or Advanced Optimus, and it does have a MUX, but it, that means it'll require a restart. Now, at 4K resolution, a MUX is not really gonna make that big a difference, so you could keep this in Optimus-only mode if you need to be switching to battery life, and it is a fairly portable laptop still, despite how uh, heavy and overall large footprint, it's still fairly thin, so just know that it's got that deep footprint it's gonna be harder to fit in some of those backpacks. Now, um, this laptop has the most feature-rich feature set out of any laptop in 2023, and it's got a price tag to match. It's not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. Moving on to the Asus SCAR 16. This one costs $35.99, which is a nice middle ground price considering a lot of the premium features that you're getting on this laptop. You get the highest end processor with the i9-13980HX with undervolting support now in the new BIOS update. RTX 4090 with 175 watts, 32 gigs of DDR5 4800, so this is a little bit slower, not as slow as the GT77, but still 4800 is not as fast as the 5600 or 6400 that you're getting in some of the other laptops. Now you get a mini LED, QHD+, 240 hertz display. It's fantastic. It's gorgeous. I really love this laptop. Now, uh, when you get to the benchmark comparison, I want to point out that this is the smallest laptop in the comparison at 16 inches. And it's got a heat pipe solution, so not a vapor chamber. And it's three fans, liquid metal. So it is, um, it's got two main fans with one small fan blowing across the middle of the chassis to help keep the heat uh, from accumulating in that middle of that chassis. Um, coil wine can be bad on some of the R uh, SCAR 16 units. I do have coil wine on my unit. Uh, there was a BIOS update that was supposed to help with coil one. I did not test that yet. That's on my to-do list. There's no Windows Hello, but you do have a decent-ish low-quality webcam. Um, so you can use that for Skype calls or Zoom. Um, and I really like the Armory Crate software, and BIOS updating has been phenomenal on the SCAR 16. Got great RGB lighting that wraps around the front. Um, great RGB lighting on the back and on the keyboard itself. It's really it's really phenomenal. You get uh, a lot of premium features and performance for the money with Advanced Optimus and G-Sync, but uh, no Windows Hello. It's probably the only premium feature that the SCAR 16 is really missing, and I really wish it had it. Um, so we're gonna move on to the next laptop overview. I really like the SCAR 16 overall and definitely recommend it. Alienware M18, $34.99. I did test the 4080 version of the Alienware M18. So it's important to note that in this benchmark comparison that we're about to do, the, the M18 is a RTX 4080, not a 4090, but you can get a 4090 version, right? So um, know that the 32 gigs of DDR5 4800 is again, slower RAM. So it's not as fast 
as the higher end laptops. You also, uh, the QHD Plus is 165 hertz and it was only 290 nits measured with the tool, which is the lowest we've seen out of any of the laptops that we've tested. Um, but it's very colorful with close to 100% Adobe RGB and P3 color gamut. Now there's vapor chamber cooling with element 31 liquid metal, loud fans on the M18, um, very loud overall. Not quite as loud as the GT77, but it's pretty close. CPU temps were bad, likely because of a bad CPU paste job on the unit I got. Now, again, uh, the Alienware software was terrible. I really did not like Alienware Command Center. The updates did not help it very much. It crashed several times. It was very intrusive popping up when you're loading into games. Great port selection, great keyboard touchpad with good speakers. Overall, mainly because of the CPU temps, the display, like it just makes it hard for me to recommend the Alienware M18 at this point. That said, plenty of people are gonna get the Alienware M18 and love it. And if you're not too picky, it could be a decent option for you, especially if you're not too picky with your money because it definitely costs more and you're getting a bit less uh, for your money, at least in some ways. Because you also get the lower end i9 13900HX instead of the 13980HX uh, for like the same price point uh, or more expensive than what some of the other laptops we're gonna talk about in the better value category at least. Um, okay, next up is the Blade 18. The Blade 18 is the laptop I chose for myself so far in 2023. We've got an i9 13950HX, but you can get the 13980HX depending on which model you buy. 32 gigs of DDR5, 5600 RAM. So the RAM is faster, which helps boost performance on the Blade 18 in memory sensitive games. It's the best non-mini LED display at 560 plus nits. Uh, and it's really great color gamut and better contrast. It's the thinnest, most portable 18 inch laptop. And it, uh, the fans are fairly quiet overall, comparatively speaking, versus a lot of the competition out there. Now it's an all a unibody aluminum chassis. I love that. Three fan design with a vapor chamber cooling. Um, and overall the thermals are shockingly good for something that is so thin and quiet. Uh, and that's largely to the very optimized power delivery. The CPU wattage tends to pull like 20 to 30 watts less than a lot of the competition. And yet it's still putting out just as good of performance, if not better performance than what a lot of the other laptops uh, put out. So it's very interesting. now. It has the best speakers, webcam and touchpad in 2023. I do wish the click on the touchpad was a little bit better, but it's the largest and uh, a great surface area for the Blade 18. Now there's no, no number pad and no full size arrow keys on this huge laptop and that just does not make much sense, right? I think there definitely should be at least full size arrow keys at a minimum, um, even if they don't add the number pad. Um, yeah, overall, I do like the Blade 18 still. There has been a screen flickering issue that has come and gone on the Blade 18. Currently, as far as I know, it's not flickering for me as of yet, but it was flickering for me last week. Um, it's almost like if a driver crashes or fails or something, it starts flickering again. I reboot it and the flicker goes away. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that yet, but I need Razer to get the flickering issue figured out so I can take the laptop out of dedicated only mode. Um, and they may have already figured it out. I just haven't had time to do dedicated testing on the Blade 18 to see if uh, the flicker issue is resolved in advanced optimist mode where you can switch to the integrated GPU. Overall, really love the Blade 18. Um, and I can definitely recommend it, but it's not the best bang for the buck laptop out there. But it is a fairly portable laptop with great high levels of performance um, for the money and for its size. That's kind of the main reason why I'm loving the Blade 18. Uh, the huge display, the, the awesome speakers. It's, it's just a really great overall experience for me. Now, we're gonna move on to the next laptop on the list, the XMG Neo 17. Now, this one costs uh, around $39.96. Uh, of course, you can only get this internationally if you wanna buy this version of the laptop uh, locally. You can go to uh, Electronics to get a very similar Neo 17. Now you get the i9-13900HX as the highest processor they offer. They have recently updated the BIOS to now offer undervolting support. You get a RTX 4090 that is uh, very performance focused and factory OC'd. So it definitely has higher boost clocks than your typical RTX 4090 laptop out there without a doubt. 32 gigs of DDR5 5600, but they're offering options to get DDR5 6400 
uh, RAM with BIOS options to do XMP profiles to actually run the RAM at that speed. Now, um, some of the other laptops, you may also be able to overclock the RAM. I know some people are doing it on the Legion Pro 7i as well. So it's not the only laptop that you can get faster RAM or uh, faster XMP profiles for. Uh, and that may even be true for the uh, MSI laptops. They typically have very, um, very XMP friendly uh, memory overclocking in their BIOS for MSI laptops. Now, the XMG Neo 17, as you will see in the six-way benchmark comparison, it has the best all-around performance so far with the water cooler is connected. Now, we did not do a detailed testing on the XMG Neo 17 with the, when it was on air. We did do we did briefly test it was when it was on air, and it still had very good performance, very competitive still, but not as fast. Because once you attach the water cooler, uh, the, the laptop fans do get fairly quiet, and the CPU and GPU can then clock higher, pull more wattage, and just overall um, push to a higher level of performance than what you can typically push on air. Now, um, dealing with a water cooler is not gonna be for everyone. Um, you know, it did leak on my table when I did my testing, uh, just from moving the laptop around a little bit and then, you know, the water cooler edges uh, kind of moved up and down a little bit and a little bit leaked onto the table. And of course, water and electronics are not great. So you have to be very careful with this laptop if you go with the water cooler. Um, and if you're primarily gonna keep the laptop docked, uh, then I think the water cooler is an, a great option. It's not, it's not hard to unplug and replug it in, but for people that are going to be traveling a lot, you need to empty the water loop um, in the water cooler um, loop there, basically, because it can leak out in your backpack and get in the laptop and destroy it if you don't empty it. Now, there's a little tool you can use to empty the water out of the loop. It doesn't take that long to do, but it's gonna be a bit of a hindrance to people who are constantly unplugging and replugging the laptop into the water cooler. Um, so it just depends on how often you need to do that. If you only need to unplug it once a month or once every few weeks or once a week or something, that's no big deal. Like it's gonna be awesome. Um, but if you need to do it every day or multiple times a day, then that's gonna be a bit of a pain in the butt. And I wouldn't really recommend going this route at all for people that are gonna be unplugging and plugging in a lot because of the fact that you gotta empty that water loop. Um, that's probably, yeah, that's basically it. Now, um, going over some of the, the more details on here, the XMG Neo 17, the CPU ran hot. It, the CPU did not have very good thermals. The water cooling loop going over the motherboard there does not focus on the CPU cooling. It focuses on the GPU cooling and boosting the GPU. The CPU still had good performance uh, despite the high temperatures, but it's, it's definitely um, not... That you're hitting the thermal threshold basically constantly for that i9 13900HX um, unless you downclock it with a power limit um, throttling or something like that using the BIOS or different fan profile configs. Uh, but if you're trying to run it at highest level of performance, you're definitely gonna be thermal throttling on it. Now, um, the extra tuning features that XMG puts into the BIOS I think is awesome. Um, including an undervolting update after I tested. I did not test it with an undervolting done, but they have since added that, and it's gonna make me want to go back and retest the XMG Neo 17 to see what kind of performance we can get. Um, and that'll also maybe help boost the i9-13900HX performance, uh, you know, another 5-10%, um, very likely. So that could also help maybe help temp the temps a little bit, maybe, maybe, I don't know, it depends. Probably not. Usually undervolting these days doesn't help the temps, it just helps boost performance, because it basically overclocks the CPU at the same power levels. Now, uh, the downsides of the XMG Neo 17, it has some of the worst speakers that I've heard in 2023, very poor speakers overall, and a bad membrane keyboard. I would not recommend the membrane keyboard. Um, it was like probably one of the worst keyboards I've tried in 2023 as well. I did try the mechanical keyboard when I was at CES and got my hands on the Neo 17, and it was very good. I did like the, uh, the mechanical keyboard. That seemed like a pretty good keyboard. Um, Overall, a good port selection on the Neo 17. It is a plasticky build and it's a bit thicker, like 1.07 inches thick, I believe. So some of these laptops, like the Blade 18, definitely a lot thinner and even more portable, even though the Blade 18 has a bigger screen. So overall, I think the Neo 17 is gonna be a great candidate for international people um, who want to primarily plug in the gaming laptop, dock it for a week or two at a time, and get the most possible performance out of a gaming laptop. That's 
that's what the Neo 17 is for. And people who want to do uh, advanced things like uh, get the fastest memory possible uh, to push esports gaming or whatever. So overall, I can, I can recommend the Neo 17 as long as you understand what you're buying and what you're getting into. So moving on to the next laptop, the HP Omen 17. This is the cheapest RTX 4090, at least for retail pricing. Um, if you, I, I tested it with an i7 13700HX, which has eight less E cores than the i9 version, um, but otherwise has very similar levels of performance, especially in games, but for multi-core rendering, it's not as fast. Now, if you get this i7 13700HX with a 4090, it only costs 2749. That is nuts. Um, and of course, you can also get uh, an upgraded display. I believe that by default, it comes with a full HD display, but you can get up all the way up to a QHD 240 hertz display. And the display was like 350 nits bright um, on the, the Omen 17 I tested. Uh, I really liked the Omen 17. I love the keyboard on it. It has G-Sync, it has Advanced Optimus, it has Windows Hello. Um, and the mechanical keyboard feels really good. One of the best feeling kind of opto mechanical type keyboards uh, that I've had this year. Unfortunately, there's no number pad, but there's nice function key placement like home and page up, page down. It has a minimal thermal pipe solution with no liquid metal and only two fans. And yet it still put out uh, full levels of performance at 175 watts to that GPU. And for the money, it's just phenomenal. This wins the best value um, per dollar especially when this thing goes on sale and goes even cheaper than 2749. It was as low as 2549 for a 4090 version, which is just insane. Uh, so yeah. Now, the standard price is probably gonna be a bit more than that typically, especially since uh, the lowest end config options like the i7 and 1080p display uh, tend to sell out. And so the lowest price config may be a little bit more than 2749, even without a sale. So. Um, so if you want the very best price on the cheapest 4090, then this is the, the Omen 17's it, uh, especially if you wait for a sale. Anyway, Omen 17, can definitely recommend it. I really enjoyed using it. The software also was pretty dang good. Now, uh, next up we have the Legion Pro 7i, which I recently tested. I really liked the Legion Pro 7i overall. I didn't have any problems with it. We got the i9-13900HX with undervolting support. RTX 4090 up to 175 watts, 16 gigs of DDR5, 5600, and uh, that's faster than average RAM. And it is also, um, there's, if you go into the Legion Discord, there's definitely people overclocking the RAM to get it up to 6,000 6, or maybe even higher. The Legion Pro 7i is not the cheapest 4090 laptop, but there was a sale on the 4090 version that did bring the price down on this thing down to like 28, 2900, which is really insanely good value, I think. Um, and, uh, if you get the right coupons, like, uh, you can get a nice little discount on the Legion Pro 7i off of this 39, uh, basically 3,100. You can get that down below 3,000 pretty often with the coupon codes getting like 5% off or, or whatever the coupon code is for that month, maybe even a little bit more or a little bit less than that. Um, overall, you got G-Sync, Advanced Optimus, a good webcam and good speakers with nice bass. The mids were not amazing. An all-metal build feels solid with great port selection and keyboard. No SD card slot, which is a bummer. I love the keyboard layout. It feels very good to type on. The touchpad is not glass anymore. It's plastic, but it still felt really nice to use when it didn't have any issues, in my opinion. Uh, and the, the Lenovo Vantage software has been upgraded with fan curve profiles now and custom performance mode, which allows you to tweak and update uh, the Legion Pro 7i. Um, the TDP and power levels and all that. Uh, as well as the fan profile curves. There's a lot of customization now for the Legion Pro 7i in the Lenovo Vantage software, which makes it uh, much um, better software than it used to be when I had the Legion 7i in 2021. Now, uh, we had great performance in many titles, uh, but the it, performance was bugged in a couple of the titles, like in Warzone 2, um, and I believe in Hogwarts, it was also underperforming in that game, though that may have been related to only having 16 gigs of DDR5. You really need 32 in that game if you don't want to have uh, it, performance suffer, basically. Now, um, the Legion Pro 7i had excellent performance for a 16-inch laptop, and the thermals were also pretty dang good. Um, vapor chamber, liquid metal, um, nice upgradability. It's got nice style. I think the Legion Pro 7i is a fantastic laptop this year. Um, you'll see where I put it in my ratings. It make, actually makes uh, makes it into the top few for both value and overall most like best laptop, 
my best pick. So um, it's not number one in either category, but it's a nice blend between the two. So moving on, we have the uh, MSI GE78. Now I did an unboxing and testing of the 4080 version of the GE78. We got an i9-13980HX with an RTX 4975 watt um, for $39.99. Now this is a little bit pricier than what some of the other laptops uh, are charging. And I, in some ways, I don't know if it's worth, worth like the price premium over something like the Omen 17 or the uh, Legion Pro 7i or the Scar 16, which is kind of why it didn't make the top. If this thing was priced more competitively at say $32.99 or $34.99, it'd be a lot more likely for me to put this on a highly recommended um, list basically. But as it is now, uh, the price, I would just wait for a sale. That's pretty much kind of like the, the value per dollar on, on the GE78. Um, this is more portable than the GT77. And so if you're an MSI fan uh, of their laptops, then this also has 16 by 10 aspect ratio where the GT77 does not have that. Um, a nice RGB light bar in front, a good webcam, one of the better ones. Windows Hello, no G-Sync or Advanced Optimus. Again, a MUX does require a restart. We got a QHD 240 Hertz display on the GE78 and it was good, colorful, um, but not that bright, not as bright as some of the other laptops out there. That's another kind of downside about the GE78. Overall, the GE78 is a very competitive laptop, and if you're an MSI fan, the GE78 is probably the one I would personally buy between the GT77 and the GE78 because the GE78 does not have any ghosting on the display. But for people who are not esports um, junkies, the GT77 definitely is the, the better all-around laptop. Um, but I am an esports e junkie, so it's not the one that I would buy. So between this one, uh, the GE78 and GT78, between the GE78 and the GT77, the GE78 is my pick. But yeah, um, overall, I do like the GE78, but it's not quite as good in my opinion. Now, let's go back. There we go. All right, so best value RTX 4090 laptops. Um, number one is Omen 17. It's the cheapest price for a full performance RTX 4090. And there's a lot of premium features. Um, overall, I really like the Omen 17. The Lenovo Legion Pro 7i is the second cheapest price and maybe even the cheapest price if you can get the right coupons or, if, you know, it all depends on which, which laptop's on sale at the time. Um, but it's the second cheapest, at least by retail price. You get a full performance 4090 with great overall feature set and a, a strong build. I really like the Lenovo Pro 7i. It's just missing some of the premium features that could make it the number one laptop uh, or really compete with the very best. Um, the SCAR 16 is my number three in terms of best value because you get that insane mini LED display at a fairly reasonable price. Um, and it's also got the highest end CPU. The Omen 17 and Legion Pro 7i, they don't have the highest end CPU. And I feel like the SCAR 16 for all the features that you are getting on it, it's a great value overall for the money, especially if you can get, uh, if you can get a SCAR 16 that doesn't have any coil wine, um, then that is obviously gonna be a big improvement over the some of the units that do have a lot of coil wine. That's kind of like the big caveat with the SCAR 16. So if you do go the route of buying the SCAR 16, just buy it from a place that allows you to return it if you have an issue with it, like a really loud coil wine. Now, a lot of users have also reported that coil wine does go away over time. So you definitely would kind of want to do a burn in phase and see if the coil wine will go away. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and move on to my top picks for 2023 um, 490 laptops. After testing basically all the very best laptops, except the Predator Helios 18, which only goes to 4080 anyway, so it's not really a 4090 laptop. Um, the 4090 laptops, the Blade 18, it was the most premium in the smallest all-around package and it had still had great performance. Um, the performance difference between the Blade 18 and any of the, even the most powerful laptop, like the XMG Neo 17, it was minimal in my opinion, and yet uh, it had all of the premium features, the Blade 18 does. And it had the best webcam, which is important to me because I do live stream and I can utilize that webcam uh, depending on the day or when I need it. I need a, a good webcam sometimes for my business meetings as well. And it's still had great performance and it's in a sleek package and I need something that I can travel with when I need to go on the road. That's why I had a 16 inch laptop before, but this thing, um, even though it's an 18 inch, it's the size of a 16 inch compared to a lot of the other 16 inches because it's such a compact build. 
I really love the Blade 18. The GT77 is my second favorite 4090 laptop. Main downside is the eSports ghosting on the display. Other than that, it's the most complete, most feature rich, and the best thermals with the best all around display stats, aside from the ghosting, of course, on the display. Um, and if you're just looking for the most complete package, the GT77 is it, but it's also extremely expensive and not necessarily the best value for your money. So I wouldn't recommend the GT77 unless you have a good amount of extra change that you wanna spend. Um, and price just doesn't matter as much to you over the feature set. The SCAR 16 uh, again makes both of these lists. Uh, best in class screen, highest end CPU, and still portable, great performance, under volt, just the features on the SCAR 16 is phenomenal. And the portability is amazing for a 4090 laptop that has full levels of performance. And then of course the Legion Pro 7i also makes my favorite laptops uh, for 4090 laptops. Um, great price, great build, great performance, and still portable. Um, I really like the Legion Pro 7i as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a six-way benchmark comparison with about seven different games. These are all filmed live in live streams, and I did detailed live streams of all these laptops. Now, before we get into these benchmarks, I want to make a couple of different notes. The GT77 Titan and the XMG Neo 17 both had factory overclocks applied to the GPU out of the box, basically in the VBIOS. These are settings that you're not really changing. Um, they're there by default. Um, the SCAR 16 also had a small overclock, only 50 over 100, where the GT77 and the XMG Neo were much stronger overclocks. The Legion Pro 7i had also the factory overclock um, inside of the Vantage software. There's like an overclock button that does a 150 slash 200 overclock, I believe. So it's a nice medium overclock on the Legion Pro 7i. The Omen 17 and the Blade 18 are stock and they could have more potential, um, especially um, like another five, seven, maybe 8% performance with an overclock being applied. So it's very important to note for the Omen 17 and the Blade 18, there is some there is some potential performance left on the board. And um, quite frankly, the Pro 7i and the Titan and the SCAR 16, all of those probably could be overclocked a bit more as well, though they um, are already overclocked, overclocked most of the way. So uh, moving on, let's get in here. First up, we have Cyberpunk. This is on ultra settings, DLSS on quality, frame generation enabled at 2560 by 1600. All right, so, so here we are. We are in we're gonna the benchmark mute, now. Mute this. All right. Um, so the Pro 7i and the XMG Neo 17 coming out really strong. And I, want to, I really want to point out that um, it's very important to look at the GPU clocks uh, and we're in a very similar situation right here at the beginning. The GT77 Titan coming out with 2400 on the GPU clock. The SCAR 16 doing 2000 on the GPU clock. So that's, that's almost a 20% difference in GPU clock, right? I mean, 400 divided by two, yeah, that's, that's 20%. That's an insane difference in terms of GPU clock. That said, the actual wattage that we're seeing going through the SCAR 16 versus the GT77 is not the same. The, G the SCAR 16 actually has a little more wattage. Um, moving on, the Legion Pro 7i, 2200 for the GPU clock. And look at that, it's saying 200 watts to the GPU. It's interesting, that's only temporary. It's actually not hitting that high of wattage typically. Um, the XMG Neo 17 doing 2325 on the GPU clock. The Blade 18 doing 2160 and the Omen 17 doing 2235. So right now the SCAR 16 and the Blade 18 having the lowest um, GPU clocks uh, along with the Omen 17, simply because of the, um, actually the Legion Pro 7i is also a little lower than the Omen 17, but yeah, let's go ahead and move on. Let's see what our, our actual FPS is looking like. So looking at our active FPS, there's another very important thing you need to know about the Cyberpunk benchmark is that it was updated with RTX Overdrive and some of the settings that it feels like has been revamped and changed. And this has led to some changes to uh, the actual FPS loadouts and readouts. And the Legion Pro 7i now is showing um, a little bit more FPS because this was tested after the Cyberpunk patch release. So that's partially why the Legion Pro 7i does a little bit better. So you need to take 
that into account that these other five laptops were all tested on the older version of Cyberpunk 2077, all on the same, and the Legion Pro 7i is on that updated patch that I think is kind of um, making it a little easier to run or maybe potentially get a little higher FPS. Uh, maybe 5 to 10 FPS higher. We'll have to see. Um, anyway, so moving on, here's our results. For our final results, the GT77 got 113. The SCAR-16, 117. The Blade-18, 119. The XMG Neo, 130. It looks like 0.9, so 131. And then the Omen-17, 125. So, and the Legion Pro 7i getting 125. So, very interesting. Maybe the patch didn't change as much as I thought. This is the first time reviewing all of this data together. So very interesting results. And you can see they're all within a fairly nice ballpark of each other. I think the outlier here is the Omen 17. Considering it's not overclocked, with an overclock, it might actually be able to push to the highest end here, matching the Neo 17, which is crazy to me. Anyway, moving on to the next game. What do we got next? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so Dying Light 2, this features ultra settings, DLSS on quality, frame generation enabled, ray tracing on high, and we're at 2560 by 1600, of course, for all of these benchmarks. All right, the Titan is doing around 123 FPS. The SCAR-16 doing 136 so far. The Legion Pro 7i, 147, that's huge. The XMG Neo also doing 147. The Blade 18 doing 141. The Omen 17, 136. The other thing I have got to mention about the GT77 Titan is that this was the first laptop I tested with all of these games, and it had the oldest drivers, as well as uh, even games like Dying Light 2 also had patch updates, and most of these other tests were done with those patch updates, where the Titan did not see those patch updates. So I really wanted to retest the GT77 Titan to verify these benchmark results. Just know that some of these games, I would expect a bump in performance for the Titan, uh, depending on the game between five, maybe 10%. Hard to say exactly how much, but sometimes those patches uh, and driver optimizations can make a pretty substantial difference in terms of performance. Um, that said, the majority of performance here and the temperatures you're gonna see are, I think, very realistic. Uh, looking at our temps, the Legion Pro 70i, 8073, the SCAR 16, uh, 7573, the GT77 in the 60s for both the GPU and CPU, 63, 67, the Blade 18, 66, 70, the XMG Neo 17 doing 81, uh, 81, 68, and the Omen 17 doing 83, 72. So they all have phenomenal temps uh, in this game right here. It's honestly one of the easier games to run as far as temperatures goes. Um, and our FPS performance, you can see 153 on the Legion, 154 on the Neo. So the Neo wins just by a little bit. And 141 for the SCAR-16, the GT77 Titan, 128, 146 for the Blade 18, 146 for the Omen 17. So uh, the Neo 17 and the Legion Pro 7i, both showing off uh, the power of an overclock, in my opinion. If, if the, these other three laptops were all overclocked, we would see similar results. And of course, I think with an updated software drivers and Dying Light 2, the Titan performance would also come back up into um, the right line, being in the 140s. Uh, so, Dead Space is one of the most CPU demanding games, almost always cranking some of the highest CPU temps under a dual load. It's very CPU heavy, meaning that uh, it's going to oftentimes reduce the amount of wattage going to the GPU because a lot of the power shifts over to the CPU. All right, so we're almost to the end of this test. I'm going to pause it here near the end so we can take a look at our temps and overall wattage and performance. Okay, so um, the GT77 Titan, 79 degrees on the, on the CPU, 66 on the GPU, both really good temps still, despite it being one of the hottest CPU running games. The SCAR-16, 99 degrees Celsius with 100 watts to that CPU. And this is another game, this is a great game um, that shows the power, I guess, uh, delivery between the CPU and GPU because the CPU can take a ton of wattage in this game and if it takes too much 
um, through, I guess, poor vBIOS and regular BIOS optimization, it might shift too much power from one to the other. And I believe that's kind of what's happening with the SCAR 16 in here. We're getting 99 degrees Celsius on the CPU because it's pulling a really high wattage compared to nearly everything else. So the only other laptop in this that's doing close to it is 96 watts to the XMG Neo 17. Now the Legion Pro 7i doing 8169, so temperatures are pretty good, but not quite as good as the GT77. The Blade 18, shockingly, 6778, has the best temperatures uh, between any of these. I guess it's it's actually matching exactly to the GT77 Titan, but notice that it's pulling lower wattage to both the CPU and the GPU. Only 54 watts to that CPU or 76 watts in the Titan, 158 on the GPU, 168. So. That's kind of, it's a, such an interesting thing to me, seeing how uh, the wattage is distributed between the CPU and the GPU. Um, the, the Omen 17, despite having that more minimal thermal design, is still doing pretty good here. Uh, 73 degrees on the GPU, 84 on the CPU. And overall, the XMG Neo 17, let's see here, let's take, actually take a look at the FPS right now. Uh, so we're almost to the very end. Let's wait to the very end to go ahead and fully measure out um, our performance levels. Uh, but we got 130 on the Titan, 113 on the SCAR 16, I believe, again, because of the way they're balancing the CPU, GPU not being uh, as balanced as well. 128 on the Pro 7i, Blade 18, 121, 123 on the Neo, 108 on the Omen 17. So interestingly enough, the GT77 Titan wins dead space by a fair margin. Very interesting. All right, so uh, moving on to our next one, we have uh, God of War. This is a very GPU bound focused um, game and there's not as much push to the CPU typically in this game. Um, notice that the Blade 18 is only doing 45 watts, uh, between 40 and 45 watts to the Blade 18 CPU, where these other laptops are doing sometimes 90 watts on the XMG Neo 17. Pretty crazy. All right, so looking at our averages, the Titan got 124, 117 on the SCAR, 114 on the Legion Pro 7i. So interestingly enough, the Pro 7i is in last place in this game which is a little surprising considering this has an overclock and like the Blade 18 doesn't. So 117, or we'll start 127 on the Blade 18 is the second highest performer. Uh, and the XMG Neo 17 at 128 tops our charts again. Um, and the Omen 17 is right, right up there. It's sh surprisingly close on this one. Um, the OC, if the Blade 18 was overclocked, I think that would probably be our best performer, considering that it's so close to the Neo 17 without an overclock. It's very impressive, in my opinion. Okay, so moving on, we're going into CSGO. Now, um, CSGO is a game where you're gonna try to maximize your frame rate for an eSports scenario. And CSGO is very uh, CPU sensitive when it gets into smoke scenarios. And we're not sure how CSGO two, or Counter-Strike 2 is gonna be coming up later this year when that launches. I can't wait for that game. That game's gonna be awesome. Um, but CSGO is a game that you need a great GPU and CPU performance with good memory performance. And you really wanna make sure you have a MUX switch. And every single laptop here has a MUX switch or advanced Optimus. Now, once we get into the smoke, I'm gonna go ahead and pause our FPS and we're gonna be able to see what we get. So right here in the smoke, all of the laptops are in the 90s except the Legion Pro 7i is at 101. Um, and the XMG Neo 17 is at 99. Let's go ahead and skip forward a little bit. Um, overall, again, the XMG Neo 17 and, and Legion Pro 7i doing the best FPS inside of this smoke. So I guess if you're looking for the best CSGO laptop, you're probably looking at the XMG Neo 17 or Legion Pro 7i. Pretty interesting result. Um, let's go ahead and skip to the very end where we can see our final numbers. Um, okay, so. GT77 Titan, 548, 523, 520, 559 for the XMG Neo 17. So the XMG Neo 17 taking first place once again, and then the GT77 Titan, and then the Legion Pro 7i, and the Omen 17 is taking up last place in this test. But of course, anything over, you know, anything over 240 FPS is gonna be pretty dang good in that game, and it's pretty easy to hit that, especially since those are high settings. Now, Hogwarts 
had some massive patch overhauls as well. The GT77 Titan on an older patch. Uh, that's largely why I think it underperforms in this game, but it's a very, uh, this area of the game in Hogsmeade is a very CPU uh, sensitive area of the game. And notice also that the laptops that have uh, over 16 gigs of RAM, they're all pulling uh, over 22 gigs or about, about 22, 23 gigs of RAM. So the Blade 18 doing 23, 22.7 on the Scar 16, 21.5 on the Neo, um, and the HP Omen 17 and the Legion Pro 7i only having 16 gigs of RAM, they are struggling a bit more to deal with this, this scenario. Um, and I think that's largely due to the, the DDR5. 16 uh, gigs of RAM not being enough, and you really want to go for 32 gigs of RAM uh, for certain games in 2023. And I think that's only going to keep getting worse as the year goes on. years go on. So I really recommend getting 32 gigs of RAM if you're going to be doing uh, QHD gaming or any of these very CPU-centric um, games where they have to, the games have to hold lots of game assets like all of these NPCs and textures and in-game items. Um, so getting to the end of our Hogwarts run here. Let's see what we are getting for our FPS. Uh, 78, 43 for the GT77 Titan. So it's actually not a bad result for our 1% low at 43. Uh, 98, 26 on the Scar 16. Uh, not sure what that is on the Legion Pro 7i. 97, 19 on the Omen 17, but only nine FPS for our 1% low on the Legion Pro 7i. That's really bad. Uh, not good there. And that's, again, I'd say the 1% the, the lows being bad on the Omen 17 and Pro 7i are related to the RAM. Um, moving on to the XMG Neo 17 did 111.59. Excellent 1% lows on the XMG Neo 17. And I gotta say, it played butter smooth throughout Hogsmeade, which is one of the few laptops that have actually pulled that off. Um, that said, I'm pretty sure the Titan would also pull that off now after all of the patches and driver updates. But again, this was tested earliest this year. The Blade 18 also did very well at 111.53, matching the XMG Neo 17. And that's one of the reasons why I ended up picking the Blade 18, because I was playing Hogwarts like crazy when I was picking which laptop I wanted for this year. And the Blade 18 played Hogwarts really well as well. So um, let me go ahead and jump back just to check what the number was on that Legion... Looks like it was 94, 94 FPS for the Legion Pro 7i. So not really doing that well. Now we didn't get a test for the Legion Pro 7i in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, so looking at our temperatures and power limits, we're doing really, really well on nearly all of these laptops. Notice that the XMG Neo 17 is just slamming the CPU a bit harder in most of these games. And I think that may, be partially why it's showing some of the best 1% low performance. Looking at that, 117 is higher 1% low than any of these other laptops right now. And that just translates to a little bit more fluid gameplay experience, though it's harder to manage the thermals on a laptop uh, when you have that much wattage going through the CPU on, the, on a more regular basis. And that's partially why I think XMG is able to do this, push so much wattage to the CPU because they have that water cooler. Now, um, looking at our actual FPS numbers during this test, we're, you know, we're going to look at the final result for our final numbers, but the GT77 Titan is in the 150s. The XMG Neo 17 is also in the 150s. These other laptops are in the 140s. So both the XMG Neo and the GT77 Titan being uh, showing off the factory overclock here and really pushing those high GPU boost clocks, 2300 on the boost clock, 2250 on the GT77 Titan, and um, really cranking out the FPS in those two laptops. Um, our temperatures, do any of these laptops right now exhibiting really high temps, a little too high of temps? Uh, not, not really, like 60, 65, 77 on the Titan, 76, 81 on the SCAR, 73.90 on the Omen, a bit high on the Omen, but that's fine. Uh, we're not even thermal throttling, and that's a good amount of wattage going through the CPU and GPU on the Omen 17. Uh, the XMG Neo 17 doing 106 watts, 108 to the CPU, 167, 170 to the GPU. That's pretty insane. Basically 270 watts going through that Neo 17, and the temperatures are still in check at 67.78. 
Um, the Blade 18, 67, 74, and look at the power distribution, only 45 watts going through that CPU again. Such a minimal amount of wattage going through the Blade 18, showing off the power balance between the CPU, GPU loads, where the Neo 17 is oftentimes literally more than doubling the power wattage going through that CPU. Now, of course, the, the Neo 17 is cranking at a higher um, overall TDP and higher boost clock on that CPU and a higher temperature despite it having a water cooler. Over, I just love, I love the way the Blade 18 is tuned. The fact that it's able to push these really high FPS numbers while at the same time not really even pushing that high of wattage through the CPU at the same time. So I really, really like that. All right, so our actual end result, 169 for the GT77, SCAR 16, 158, 156, I mean, 161 on the Blade 18, 173 for the XMG Neo 17, 155 for the HP Omen. So really phenomenal results with the XMG Neo 17 winning out in another game. So we don't have the Titan on the Witcher 3, unfortunately. So moving into the Witcher 3 run through um, our FPS benchmark right now, it looks like the XMG Neo 17 is leading at 114 FPS. 113 on the Legion Pro 7i, showing off that overclock, also being a very GPU-bound game, um, or very GPU-centric game in terms of raw FPS. Our 1% lows, once again, being just rocking awesome on the Neo 17 at 88 for our 1% lows. That's very good in The Witcher 3. Witcher 3 tending to stutter and judder quite a bit more than some other games, showing that, uh, you know, really cranking that, that CPU wattage and boosting the CPU uh, performance can benefit you with your 1% lows. Okay, so our end result, the XMG Neo 17 getting first at 118, and the Legion Pro 7i tying it at also 118, but the Neo 17 having 89 for our 1% low is just insanely good. It's so phenomenal. Um, 111 on the SCAR 16, 113 on the Blade 18, 114 on the Omen 17. Uh, overall, really phenomenal results, I think. Uh, from this uh, test. I, I, I really enjoy comparing these. I wish we had more head-to-head uh, -head because just too many. I, no, I tested all of these laptops with more than 10 plus games and I did detailed live streams on all of them. So if you're interested, if this kind of made you go, ooh, the Legion Pro 7i or oh, the XMG Neo 17 plays these games better than uh, these other laptops for the price or like the Omen 17 being a phenomenal value for the price, you can see the Omen 17 is really keeping up with these other laptops, not just in terms of FPS numbers, but also in terms of total um, like temperatures and 1% lows. The Omen 17 did really, really well, shockingly well, considering that it's undercutting nearly the entire lineup in terms of pricing. And I think the other standout, of course, is the Legion Pro 7i in terms of value. Both of those pushing tremendous FPS uh, for the money. And uh, so, if you're after the most 4090 possible performance for the money, those are the top two, Omen 17 and Legion Pro 7i. And then, uh, of course, there are links in the description down below if you want to buy any of these laptops and support me as a content creator. Use a browser that in, does not uh, disable cookies, doesn't block the ad trackers or whatever, because basically you have to click through one of the affiliated links with the ad trackers enabled and then make your purchase and it'll eventually help support me as a content creator. Now, um, should you upgrade your laptop? That's totally up to you. If you are in a place where you're not getting the FPS you want, or you have now surplus funds and you're available, it's a good time to upgrade, I think. Because the, the RTX 4090 is a phenomenal increase in performance and just, it's equal to the best desktop from last year, which is insane to me. Um, it, it's matching the RTX 3090, which I did not imagine we would see in a laptop like, for a long time, like it, this was a bigger jump. You know, usually generational increases is in performance is closer to 25 to 30 percent, especially on the top end. But we're seeing an over 50 percent gain in performance, not even including frame generation technology. So, um, and then of course, given the performance of the Blade 18, the Blade 18 being thinner and more portable than all of these other laptops, except I mean, I guess the Scar 16 and Legion Pro 7i are 
and the same portability factor, just because they're 16 inch chassis, they're about the same size as the Blade 18. The Blade 18 being a bigger display in a more portable form factor, I think is really special. And all of the premium features that it comes with just makes it me think it's the number one in terms of most premium, best all around uh, laptop performance package, balance, thermals, noise it makes, the speaker quality, the webcam, um, the trackpad, the display, all of that put together. I really like what the Blade 18 offers. I, I do wish it had a mini LED display. That'd probably be the main thing that I would I wish it had. But aside from that, it's, and, and of course, larger arrow keys. But besides that, I really, really love the Blade 18. So if you have an unlimited budget, I would go either Blade 18 or GT77 Titan. Uh, if you're after the ultimate in performance and you are gonna be mainly in one place, the XMG Neo 17, I think is probably pretty close to the ultimate in performance. Um, but all of these laptops were performing very close in nearly all of the games, right in the same ballpark. And it's all phenomenal experiences to where, you know, if you're getting 155 FPS versus 145 FPS, you're not gonna really be able to tell that difference, a 10 FPS difference in any game. Now, um, overall, I think the other features that it comes with and the price tag are gonna matter to more to most people. And that's why the price tag being the best on the Omen 17 and the Legion Pro 7i, while still providing in the same ballpark of performance, those are my top two recommendations right now for RTX 4090s. Unless you have an unlimited budget or you just don't mind spending the extra money, then I would go Blade 18 like I did. So that's it for my top laptop comparison for 2023 for the most powerful laptops so far. I've got more laptops to test and I've got a whole bunch of RTX 4080 laptops that I've tested as well that I want to do this size type of comparison with. Um, so, and I've got, of course, I've got like a bunch of smaller, thinner laptops like the, the, uh, Zephyrus G14 that I want to do some, what are the best portable laptops for people that need to be on the go a lot more. So be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on all of that content. And I'm really looking forward to bringing you guys more videos soon. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon out. Huzzah. <laughs>